So when I started thinking about becoming a programmer, one of the first questions that I ran into was, is it future proof? Or will AI just come in and take over right as I'm about to graduate from university and get my first job? So by the principle that if I had this concern, then there's probably others that are having it too. I decided to make this video in order to kind of share my views on the topic as a software developer. Obviously, I did think that it made sense to keep going. I think people hear AI and think that everything is going to get automated, that all jobs will be replaced by robots or machines and that the world will go into chaos. Phone companies like Apple, Samsung and Google are constantly boasting their newest achievements in AI. Google shows off their Google Assistant calling up restaurants and making pretty complex dinner reservations despite encountering difficulties like bad reception and language barriers. Let's say you want to call a restaurant, but maybe it's a small restaurant which is not easily available to book online. The call actually goes a bit differently than expected. So take a listen. Hey, how may I hear you? Hi, um, I'd like to reserve a table for Wednesday the 7th. For seven people? Um, it's for four people. Four people when? Um, Today, next Wednesday at 6 p.m. Oh, actually, we leave here for like after like five people. For few, four people, you can come. How long is the wait usually to uh, be seated? For when tomorrow or weekday or? For next Wednesday, uh, the seventh. Oh, no, it's not too busy. You, you, you can count for four people, okay? Oh, I gotcha. Thanks. Bye-bye. Now, this is super impressive, and it is really a true feat of technology. But is it really AI? When determining what AI actually is, something that often gets brought up is the Turing test that was conceptualized by Alan Turing. And Alan Turing is what I would call the first computer scientist of our time. And he's also credited with having solved the German Enigma machine during World War II. There's a great movie about all of this that I recommend watching if you haven't. That's called The Imitation Game. Anyway, the Turing test is essentially what Google does here. If you put a person and a machine behind a curtain and you start talking to them, your machine has passed the Turing test when you're not able to figure out when you're talking to the machine versus the human. So technically, I would say that Google passes this test in this showcase. However, I believe the Turing test is far more complex than this. For a machine to truly pass the Turing test, you would have to spend a really long time talking to it, switching subjects and trains of thought. And most importantly, you also have to be aware that you're actually trying to figure out whether you're talking to a machine or a person, which if we look at Google's display here, they're calling restaurants uh, where people are picking up and answering that are not at all expecting to be talking to a machine. So they're not trying to figure this out. And so therefore these people are the easiest to fool. And the reason for bringing this up is just to explain that the AI that we see in our phones that make it seem as if the singularity is only a few years away is not actually as advanced as it may seem. And the second part to this is that the Turing test may not be the test that we should be too concerned with. I think that the Turing test is more of an indication that we're getting closer to general AI than an actual test that proves that we've reached general AI. This is where I think a lot of the general public get confused. It seems as if we're getting closer and closer to a general AI that could take over all of our jobs. But in reality right now, we're only perfecting the skill of predictions based on lots and lots of previous data. The reason Google's Assistant is able to reply correctly is that it has the ability to remember millions of conversations, both in the written word and in the spoken word. And by being able to remember all of that, it can make a calculation, a fairly simple calculation I would assume, which is this. Based on what's been previously said in this conversation, what other conversations have I heard that match this one the best? And then what was the next sentence in those conversations that has the highest match rating to this particular question? 
So it doesn't necessarily understand why it's replying, um, yeah, let's do five o'clock for four people. But based on the millions of previous conversations that it's heard, it's able to make a guess that the sounds that produce this sentence is the most likely appropriate response here. You can imagine this as if you go to a local park and the first time you go, you see a dog. The second time you go, you also see a dog. And now you're about to go for the third time. Which animal are you more likely to see between a cat and a dog? You're more likely to see a dog. So if you had to guess, you should guess dog. And that is essentially how Google's assistant makes conversation. But instead of only having gone to that park two times, Google has been to that park a billion times at every millisecond of the day and seen every animal that has ever visited that park since it first started going. So Google can make the guess of dog or cat with vastly more information than you could. Also, this video is sponsored by NordVPN. NordVPN helps keep your data safe and private while you're surfing the web. Your location stays private, you can surf the web anonymously, and all of your data gets encrypted. One of the really cool things or side benefits of this is being able to surpass regional restrictions. So if a video or movie on Netflix is not available in your country, then you can just easily switch countries through NordVPN which is super useful for me since here in Sweden, Netflix does not have the office for whatever reason. So I recommend getting NordVPN and giving it a try. Just go to nordvpn.com slash Holden and use the coupon code Holden to get 70% off the three year plan and one month completely free. There'll be a link in the description. Now I am adding several layers of abstraction to this in order to make it sound extremely simple. But it is a very complex thing and I don't want to take anything away from the engineers that actually developed this. But it's not complex in the way that most people would think. It's a complex thing to take all of that data and sift through it in a short amount of time. It's a complex thing to create the calculations that actually determine whether a sentence is more appropriate than another. It's a complex thing to develop all of these algorithms that actually do all of this. But the base principle behind it is still simply making predictions. This sort of system may very well be able to replace jobs like customer support, which to a large extent has been going on for years already. Pretty much anywhere you call today, there's a voice directing you to press 1 for English or to press 3 to get to the Department of Defense for inquiries about the jail times for hacking the Area 51 database. And Google's Assistant is essentially just a better version of this. And again, one of my favorite people to quote, Naval Ravikant, he mentions this as well, that the jobs that will be replaced are the more boring, repetitive jobs, and that will leave room for new, more creative jobs. When he starts talking about automation and how it's going to just eliminate massive amounts of jobs and leave people stranded. What do, you, do you, when, I know you're a guy who thinks about the future. And I'm going to take the unpopular point of view on okay. this. I, don't, I think it's a non-solution to a non-problem. Mm. Um, and I mean that in the sense that automation has been happening since the dawn of time. Mm -hmm. Man, when electricity came along, that put a lot of people out of work. Did it? <laughs> right? A lot of people carrying buckets of water and you know, lighting lamps and all those kinds of things. And this was the concern uh, with factories as well, yeah, right? Yeah, everything. Literally every single thing that comes Even along. Even the printing press. Right? Absolutely. Sure. And what it does is it frees people up for new creative work. So the question is not, is automation going to eliminate jobs? There is no finite number of jobs. <laughs> We're mm -hmm. not like sitting right. around dividing up the same jobs that were around since the Stone Age. <laughs> so obviously new jobs are being created and they're usually better jobs, more creative jobs. So the question is, how quickly is this transition going to happen? And what kinds of jobs will be eliminated? And what kinds of jobs will be created? It's impossible looking forward to predict what kinds of jobs will be created. Programming in that sense is contrary to what many people think, and it's actually very creative. Building an app involves so much creativity that I don't know that it can ever be automated, even with general AI. And if we get to that point, then I don't think you'll be needing to write code anyway, because that would mean that the AI can do everything for us, meaning that either it takes over and we all become slaves, or some government controls it and we all become slaves, or it does everything for us so that we are free to do whatever we feel like, which can still be writing code and building apps, but it may as well be mountain climbing or free diving. 
So writing code is extremely complex and very difficult to automate because it requires so much decision making. But I do think that parts of the programming process can be automated. Like for instance, uh, when you want to create a button, there are already extensions available for this where they provide you the boilerplate code for that. And that's kind of how I think that AI will work for us in the future, that these sort of systems will get even more advanced, which will really only be good for us because that'll mean that we'll have to spend less time doing the boring, repetitive tasks and can spend more time on the more difficult and usually more interesting tasks. So if you're considering becoming a programmer and you're kind of worried that AI will take over your job before you're done learning, then don't worry about that because I think it's very far off and it's probably even questionable whether we can reach that point. So I definitely think that you should try it and see what you think of it. But that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. And before you go, I want to mention that I created a separate channel where I do some live stream coding every now and then. And if you want to, you can go over to that channel and subscribe to that one as well. It's called Live Coder and there'll be a link to that in the description as well. So if you want to, you can subscribe to that and come hang out with me as I do some pure long form coding sessions. All right, I'll see you in the next one.